are by the strings of his soul. Time flies like the wind. Generations change like waves. 1945. Victory and the 100th anniversary of Abai. The first film about the great poet. The main role of Abai is played by Kalibek Kwanishbaev. The director of the film was Rochal. He wrote the libretto together with Awezov. The libretto to the opera was staged a year earlier in 1944. In this theater, Richard Abdulin plays the role of the poet. Composers of the opera are Ahmed Chubanov, Latif Hamidi, and Abai himself. The production contains melodies written by the great poet. The opera Abai always starts the theatrical season in our theater and closes it. Abai himself, both in opera and in the film, is not the main character. He, if we may say so, is the main moral compass, both now and then. Come to us to happiness. Open your eyes. Even when your eyes are open, will you see what you need to see? Will you hear the music of the poet's soul? Will you understand the main mystery of his personality? Life of a poet, how did it develop? Mukhtar Awezov said that Abai is a whole ocean and that he scooped only a spoonful from it. Poetic lines, how did they turn into a dowry? Together with the dowry, girls always took away the manuscript notebooks of Abai's poems. The songs of Abai, how were they written? No matter how many of his poems, Awaz have had time to collect, a lot of them couldn't be found. Other researchers write about this too. The mystery of creativity, the mystery of character, and the difficult fate of priceless creations. Abai, the strings of his soul. Chapter 1. Unknown Abai. And the one who lives without love cannot be called a person. You may be naked and a beggar, but you have family and friends. Abai. A light massage, eyebrows are a little brighter, and just a hint of a highlight on the eyes and the most unpleasant procedure, applying glue under the beard. This one is easy to remove, says makeup artist Elena Kornovalova. So let's be generous. Now we will get dressed and go on stage. The path of theatrical abai is short. Backstage, Talgat goes to the personal dressing room. A suit is ready, prepared there. Only a few final touches are left. We can say that right from the conservatory, I started to play abai. His hero is calm, majestic and wise, the ideal image of a poet, a philosopher and a teacher. Without a doubt, he was like that. But what was Abai like for his loved ones? Just in everyday life, what kind of person was he? According to the descriptions, Abai was not very tall, he was a refined man. Pay attention to his fingers on the photo, he had long fingers. It's easy to imagine how these fingers sort out the strings of a dombra or the pages of a book. Here is Abai on horseback, feeding a golden eagle. He really loves hunting. Or Abai lecturing his household members. An unusual picture. Let's try to understand the nature of the poet, break stereotypes and find ourselves in the kitchen. This kitchen is located in Jidabai. It is rather cool here. In general, I must say that Abai considered greed to be the highest human sin, including food. In everyday life, his eating habits were unpretentious. He preferred cold meat and a hot broth. The smell of smoked meat is still here. Everything here absorbed the smell. Everything here, it used to be an orange-yellow color. 
They smoked a lot of meat in this room. His table was always full. He was never dull or lethargic. He would find a character trait in a shepherd or a female employee, and he good-naturedly joked with them. He could quickly become angry and quickly became joyful. His soul was very receptive. Father always missed people who had a cheerful character and a sparkling word. From the memoirs of Turgul Konanbayev. He slept little, went to bed late, and got up early, the poet's son writes. He could have shouted at the children a little, he respected women, he was a gambler, he played Tugas Kumalak and Checkers. He also loved riddles and practical jokes. He had a young girl who worked for him as a maid. She set the table for tea, and he said to her in private, Tonight I'll be speaking to you directly like this. Is that right, Makia? And you will answer, yes, right. And during an intellectual conversation, he turned to her with the words, right? And she answered importantly, yes, that's right. Then all the guests were surprised. What a smart girl. This way, he arranged pranks for his acquaintances. And another touches to his portrait. He was receptive to everything new. He was generous, sometimes excessively. He preferred mental work over physical work. He rarely rode a horse. He mostly traveled in a carriage. In the character of his father from an early age, anger and love went hand in hand. He came to good nature through trial. Kunanbai had a complicated character. Father used to say, fear and love Water and fire never get along. A person perceives the teachings of the one he loves, and instructions through force and fear do not achieve the goal. From the memoirs of Turgul Kunanbayev. Instructions through fear and power to a large extent were about him. The poet's father, Kunanbay, could not stand if something happened not at his command. Popular rumor ascribed to Kunanbai such words, glory to Allah, in our family there are neither kins nor shamans. It seems that Kunanbai did not welcome the creative impulses of his son. Maybe that's why Abai did not advertise his works or did not put his name on them. During the life of the poet, only a few poems written by him were published. Why? This is a riddle. What was the reason? Just the reluctance of Abai or were there any other reasons? How did the first poetic experience begin? Whose names did Abai use to sign his poems? And why not a single draft has been preserved? Chapter 2. The Price of a Word It's not for fun. I create my verse. I do not fill my verse with fiction. Abai. In audible conversations with the librarian, the quiet rustlings of pages and phones in silent mode, only discoveries can be loud within these walls in the literal and figurative sense. This year, on January the 16th, the Literary Center of Abai Konanbay was opened on the second floor of our National Library. Poems, words of edification, research, musical heritage, only 5% of the entire collection is dedicated to Abai. There are 10,000 books in the Golden Fund of the National Library. A collection of books that has no equal in the world, it would seem. There are no more questions left, but there are. Lermontov wrote the first poetic lines when he was nine, Goethe at 10. As for Abai, again, it's a great mystery. A poem was preserved that presumably was written in Semipalatinsk during his studies. 
A 13-year-old Abai ranks the seven poets of the East. All my pleas are for you. Support the poet, I ask, he wrote. Support the poet, which means that there has already been a poetic experience. But where are they? Those first lines that young Abai sang about. Already at the age of 14, Abai composed poems. He surprised his peers. Sometimes he joked about someone in them. Peers memorized his poems by heart, using them in aitus, but no one recognized him as a poet. From the memoirs of Kakatai Iskakor. Just at this time, Kunan Bai decided that Abai had enough of studies, that it was time for him to get used to adulthood to help his father. And a couple of years later, the poet already had his own family. He became a father at 16 and a half. When he was 31, 32 years old, he was already a grandfather. Only at 35, Abai again returned to poetry, writes Maktar Wezov. Let us doubt the words of the great master. Can a poet not compose poems, especially at a time of youth and love? No matter how many of poems Awezov had time to collect, a lot of them couldn't be found. Other researchers write about this too. Early poems almost never reached us. They say that Abai wrote a lot about love, but you see, he did not attach importance to this. Back in those days, the Kazakh nobility didn't allocate much respect for poets. The reason was that it was common among the poor to memorize verses, so that if the opportunity arose, they could give prize to some rich man in the hope that he would give something to them from his pocket. From the memoirs of Kakatai Iskakov. Over the years, Abai did not hide his gift, but he did not particularly pay much attention to it, and he often attributed his creations to others. Sometimes they were even classics of Eastern poetry, Babur and Fizuli. But the most mentioned was Kokpai Janatauli, a friend and a student of Abai who was 10 years younger than the poet. He did not sign his poems with his name. He always handed them out or said that his poem was written by his young friend, Kokpai Janataev. Even the poem Summer was published in 1889 in the Kazakh newspaper on behalf of Kokpai. How many times did the poet attribute his creations to others is unknown. But it looks like the poem Summer was the last one. You can say Abai bought it. He invited Kokpai and said, Kokpai, I give you a horse with a foal to buy my old poems. From now on, I will use my name to sign them. And he wrote a lot and already signed poems using his name. His son, Turagu, writes that his most fruitful years were from 1889 to 1891, especially in the winter. Wherever Abai stopped, there were rooms with a desk. There were conditions for creativity, but not a single draft has been preserved. What was the fate of his works? It was different. Here's just one example. The year when he married Yerkezhan, he went to a Volost Congress. There, his chatty peer, Kizar, wishing to joke, said, after moving to the main house, you finally put on some weight and dressed up. The joke was inappropriate. Was my father either in need of food and clothing? Angry Abai wrote in a poem. The next day, Kizar begged for them for my father and burned it. From the memoirs of Turagul Kunanbaya. It's known that the poet, as a rule, did not correct or rewrite the poems. It doesn't mean that he treated his manuscripts carelessly or easily. He showed them to relatives, they memorized them, and then the drafts just disappeared somewhere. And only in the mid-80s or the 18th century did manuscripts collections of Abai's poems appear. In the Museum of Mukhtar Awezov, there's a rare exhibit, the works of Abai recorded by his contemporary. Uh, 
From the time of Mukhtar Ouezov, a notebook of Mullah Merseyit was preserved. He was always by a by side. He constantly wrote down his poems. Mullah Moseyit served as a translator and clerk in the office of the district chief, was a teacher in the village of Abai, and the first to compile a collection of poems by the poet. It said that since 1896, at the insistence of the poet himself, the Mullah began to record his creations. That's how three manuscripts of Mullah Moseyit with the words and the verses of Abai reached us. It was the Musaid manuscript that became the basis for the subsequent editions of Abai's works. However, according to preserved information, there were other lists. They say that often fans of the poet's work hired literate people who copied Abai's poems. It cost no less than one sheep. Mukhtar Ouezov writes that girls from the Tobukti family, leaving for their fiancé's village, always took with them a diary with the manuscript of Abai's poems. Perhaps priceless lines are still stored somewhere in the family archives. But there is another layer of the poet's multifaceted personality. Abai is a singer and composer. Where is Abai's Dombra stored? Who did he sing for? And how did the poet's voice sound? Chapter 3 Songs of Abai The soul may be full from everything. Only a song is always good. If you sing inspiredly, the chest resources and breathes freely. Abai. Jidabai, the Museum of the Poet. This house was inherited by Abai. He moved here after the death of his brother, Ospan, and lived here for the last years of his life. The exhibits that the poet's hand touched are stored here. This is a three-string dombra of Abai. Three strings in the form of a tuma, the dombra is somewhat unusual, but quite characteristic of Abai's homeland. One of the rarest musical instruments to date, it was distributed mainly in the eastern regions of Kazakhstan and also in Semirechi. Vocal traditions are strong in these regions and the dombra was most often used for accompaniment. That's why this form is not round, it sounds quiet, it doesn't interfere with the voice and it's convenient to hold. This is a real copy of the original instrument of Abai Kunanbayev himself. The instrument is of a rather small size. Presumably, it was Abai's camping dombra, and somewhere on the road during a break, you could hear the quiet voice of the poet. They say he was a baritone. A baritone, but mastered by years of training. It's known that Abai Kunambayev was a composer, but not many people knew that he sang because he didn't perform to anyone. He usually sang when he was alone. Or when he was surrounded by the closest people, they were the first listeners of Abai's new songs. Abai mostly sang lyrical songs. He especially loved to sing love songs, songs about his homeland. Musical and poetic evenings, how did this happen? His wife, Igarim, sang along with the sons, Akilbai and Turagul, accompanied them. By the way, both perfectly played dombra and violin. 
He specifically called for musicians who played the violin for his children. He called violinist Yakov from our city of Seme especially to the village so that he could teach his children how to play the violin. It was the descendants of the poet who preserved the most correct versions of his music. Abai did not record the melodies of his songs, humming to his friends, often professional singers and musicians. The poems laid on the music spread throughout the steppe much faster. There is an opinion that Abai composed music for poems to popularize them. But the verses of Abai did not need this. They were passed orally and without musical accompaniment. The songs of Abai were not written by an illustrator, but by a composer. They played a big role in the development of the musical culture of the Kazakh people. Ahmed Zhobanov, from the book Nightingales of Centuries. Almost every Kazakh, young and old, reads Abai and knows his songs by heart. The thoughts of a bird strives to the sky and its shadows is a melody, the poet said. It's believed that the melodies composed by Abai before 1887 have not survived to this day. What was the fate of his musical creations? How many melodies were created by him? And where were they written? Epilogue. Moral compass. Since 1889, for three years, Abai wrote music for many of his poems, as his son Turagol writes. And how many melodies were written before? Have they survived to this day? Unlikely. The fate of his musical creations is also not simple. The first of them were put to music two decades after the death of Abai. Some melodies just spread among the people, and often singers, improvising, added their own motifs to them. Abai was an innovator both in music and in poetry. Thanks to him, new poetic and musical forms appeared in our culture. Kazakh songs never sounded like this before. According to various estimates of experts, Abai created over 200 poems, about 60 translations, 45 words of edification, three poems, and at least 30 melodies in his life. Mukhtar Awezov investigated a considerable number of poems which were attributed to Abai. He selected only those in which he had no doubt. No one has conducted such a careful selection of musical heritage. But how many more works of Abai weren't discovered yet, and will they ever be discovered? Mukhtar Awezov said that Abai is a whole ocean, and that he scooped only a spoon from it. They say that fate develops out of character. Poems are written to this music. A human, a poet, a composer. The main moral compass, both in his time and in ours. We hear a quiet voice of the poet for centuries now, the delicate strings of his soul, how to understand them and how to hear them. Soul, you must come alive, and like a bird, look at the light and spread your wings to the sky again, to the higher road you should reach for the sky. Abai.